No matter what the patch, there is one nation that excels at both a world conquest as well as at unifying Europe ridiculously fast. That's right, we're doing Austria today, and with the Domination DLC, Austria receives some flavor that not many people are aware of, albeit it's not direct flavor. Some of the mission trees that the uh, Domination DLC offered other nations actually helps the Austrians, especially in the early campaign, because the AI has a tendency of not fully using the those mission trees uh, the way they should be doing and that's what we're gonna be doing today we're gonna max out the PU's we're gonna max out the land that we want and we're gonna make Austria great again and the words of Friedrich von Trumpf. Now boys, before we continue, I would love to do a brand new campaign as Burgundy in the current patch since Burgundy also had some flavor added to it and it's actually a lot more fun now. My old Burgundy campaign was one of my personal favorites, so if we get 5,000 likes in this video, we will redo that and we're gonna turn Burgundy into an amazing country or, well, we're gonna turn it into Lotharingia, let's face it. Of course, as always, you wanna start off by doing your estates, the plus one mana privilege and basically the standard estates as with most European Western nations. We start with the no subjects. As, as you guys know, uh, the Austrians have a tendency of getting their subjects very easy because of this mission tree and because of events that revolve around the Austrian throne. Now the decline of Hungary, of course, is going to give us a restoration of union on Hungary. But before that, we can also get restoration of union on the Bohemians by just getting five electors with 100 relations on us to back us up. And that's easy to do. At the start, everybody is backing us. Up. we just need to get um, some alliances let's say with these bad boys and some royal marriages as well if you want to really min max the schnapps out of this campaign you can uh, send one new diplo relation every one day so uh, do that and eventually you're gonna get your uh, five 100 relation electors super fast rivals we're gonna set uh, the bohemians as our first rival since we're gonna make them our pu as well as uh, the venetians even if they got good relations with you which is what's happening with bohemia and uh, um, and with uh, the Venetians in my campaign, they actually had friendly relations at the start. Still make them the rival. This way, you get some uh, power projection from either taking their provinces, making them your junior partners, and so on, right? And the peace deals. I also recommend you do the same with the Hungarians. Regardless of whether you make them a rival or not, they will still get the event to become a personal union in uh, 1450s. Or we can just attack them before that and make them a personal union through war. But we take a lot of aggressive expansion, so... I guess it, it it's basically a sort of a, what kind of preference you have at the end of the day, right? Some people like to have a more chill campaign. Some people want to rush the amount of PUs they can get the sooner the better. I also recommend you take the burger loan since you're going to need as much money as possible for the initial wars. I'm going to be recruiting the independent company over in Wienerwald and I'm also going to recruit the grand company. So essentially because we have a ton of money, actually let's go to the free company too. We're getting all the mercenaries. We still have up to a 63 land force limit. So we're a-okay. The reason I'm doing this is because we start with very little manpower, albeit we gain 600 manpower per month, which is a ton. It's still going to take a while until we actually recover our manpower fully, and we want our main army to uh, not get completely crushed in the initial wars against the Bohemians and whoever else we're going to be at war with. Oh, this is one of those rare moments where the Poles also want to be our allies. Uh, I guess I could use them in some wars. I could use them in the Bohemian War to make it insanely easy for me to rush Bohemia actually. One of the most important things I can recommend in any EU4 games you guys might have if you're new to the game or even if you're more experienced is to just mold yourself on whatever RNG you get. If the Poles were my rivals I would have likely just attacked them with the show of strength to get the uh, 300 mana points and in the process weaken them or just attack them to take the southern bits fast so then afterwards I can expand and get my uh, PU on Poland slash Commonwealth when the time comes later down the line right? So it's really a matter of what exactly is different in your game mold yourself on that because every single e4 game you're gonna have is going to be different from the other games once you get 100 admin points go ahead and get that one stability too since uh, you want to get your passive prosperity growth in your states the sooner the better this happens when you have at least one stability and then it's based off of the mana points generated by your leader so in our case we get a 40 percent chance that every month we get plus one prosperity in our states and once we reach 100 we get dev cost reduction goods produced 
and autonomy chains so it is insanely powerful having a very prosperous nation you know i really want to give these guys a better name but uh <laughs> The cuck army over here. I think that's a very accurate uh, depiction of uh, what's going on. So I'm gonna keep it like that for now. I did ally the Poles. I also allied the uh, Burgundians and I sent a royal marriage. Take note, it increases the chances of you getting the Burgundian inheritance if you're the one that sends the royal marriage. Because if they send you the royal marriage and you accept it, then technically when their leader dies, the royal marriage ends. Whilst if you send it when your leader dies, the royal marriage ends. So you get, uh, you know, get a higher chance chance of getting the inheritance plus because we're emperor we get an even higher chance of getting the inheritance so basically whenever this guy dies we pretty much have the burgundian lands now because we also got our relations over 100 with the electors by doing various stuff you can see over here for brandenburg you can see it here also for the saxons for trier and even for the half occupied by rebels nation of uh, mines and palatinat too the point is that we got the mission so buyas nokos we got the restoration of union cb on uh, Bohemia. Now we can promise to give land to the Poles and this way they're gonna join us but we are still the war leader so we decide if we actually give them anything and of course we're not gonna give them Schnappahaps because screw Poland we actually want to take the southern bits of Poland so it's gonna be like this it's gonna be Bohemia, Hungary likely south of Poland or something else depending on what might happen we might even go for the uh, Milanese PU if they uh, get the Ambrosian Republic disaster so we got to keep our options open you know what I mean speaking of they likely will be getting that soon I don't see no uh, way out of that uh, particular disaster for Milan I'm gonna get a generalus now holy mother two siege pips bro seven army tradition and we got this freaking chat lord I mean okay talk about the uh, streamer luck hey eh, boys I'm already expecting the reddit post about this particular general let's bring it on boys let's discuss it the point with this war is to essentially just uh, take over the fortifications and siege down Bohemia the sooner the better we only need 60% war score I think it was 66 it's 60% yes to uh, enforce that union and that's it if we want to get the money too we would get only 81 most of that would go to the polls so I don't really think I want to get the money I'm just gonna go for the 60% and that's that's nothing else I guess maybe I'll take Egger yeah you know what I'll take Egger since uh, Egger is a gold mine and if I don't take it now it, I, I would need to wait for 50 years until I integrate Bohemia to actually get make use of this uh, gold mine in Eger. I'll do the same with the one in Hungary. I'll take Hont and Eger as well. Well, good guy uh, Poland over here wiped out most of Bohemia's army, so um I got that going for me. I'm not going to sign a general to this. Even if I lose a lot of units from a mercenary company, I don't really care about memworks that much because in a couple of years, I get, no, not a couple of years, probably like 10, 15 years, I'm going to switch over to only regular infantry. So I guess I should care a little bit about my mercs, but it's fine. They have a purpose, okay? They're they're doing their purpose. They're making me pop proud. They're making Papa Lubidoob rich as schnappadoops. We actually got Prague surprisingly fast. 267 days is extremely fast. I, I I remember one of my previous last year runs i managed to get it in like 400 something days so uh yeah we're definitely we got some decent rng so far i'm actually enjoying the rng i got right now 112 115 we're very close to getting what we want come on i don't think we even need to siege down uh, olomok i think we can just take it after we take pardubice i'm also loving the fact that with the new dlc you get more events that's why i got the uh extra money event at the start of the campaign now i'm getting the extra diplo points and it's just good you know i mean of course you can also get bad events there's that right that can happen but let's just have a positive mindset here boys all right let's have a positive mindset all right there you go uh boom shakalokos we got the war number one in the bag take note remember you need to always improve relations with your personal unions because if your leader dies and you do not have above zero relations with your personal union you lose that union so you have to enforce a union again even though you got the cb to enforce the union it is just essentially a waste of aggressive expansion points right all right now we got control bohemia is going to give us permanent claims on silesia for now that's not a big deal but w what is a big deal is the uh 15 years imperial authority growth that's pretty decent let's go ahead and get a new rival now so we're gonna go for the orto 
bows and let's bring our units back home we didn't really lose much of anything it was mostly the poles that lost almost everything wasn't it that's fine the poles are my extra diplo relation so i don't care about them canceling in fact i would be pretty happy with them doing it oh we actually can do decline hungry now too so now this poses a little bit of a dilemma right because what really happens now is we can wait until the 1450s and then they almost a hundred well it's not 100 it's like 90 percent chance that they choose to become a personal union of ours for free but that's a good 10 years that we're waiting for this in 10 years i could have the union and then i can integrate it 10 years faster and then i can focus on other stuff and with the hungarians as my junior partner in those 10 years i get access to the balkans making it 10 times easier for me to crush the ottomans earlier on in the campaign so that's why personally i am going to attack the hungarians to enforce that union right now but like i said that's just me i know not everybody's on board with that i know that some people think it's really difficult or whatever the schnapps they think and they uh, prefer to just wait for the uh, event to trigger but it's cool if you want to do that you know i'm not judging i'm not saying you're a bad e4 player that's totally not what's going on here everyone's got their own freaking pace all right that's what i'm saying here yes we can become an elector ourselves if we take the electoral ship from bohemia i will do that but i will do it after we get above 100 plus relations with them so a little bit later down the line not just yet i also strongly encourage you to set up the uh, encourage development uh, edict over in uh, this particular state and start developing the gold mine in intel i know it can seem like a little bit of a waste of early on diplo points but the sooner you get this to 10 base production the better since it's going to help you out in the early campaign so much from intel egger and hunt at level 10 production each by the 1450 we're gonna get roughly 20 ducats just from these three gold mines alone all 20 ducats at zero autonomy so i guess not really 20 ducats because we gotta wait until we get the autonomy down first oh we can call in people now uh okay i don't mind giving a few favors away to call in some uh Aliatenstein, considering that these guys actually went over the force limit and they recruited mercs and they beat my mercenary units so uh gotta be careful here they got 22,000 plus their personal union croatia has got 4,000 and and tell you has got four so it's not you know it's not an easy war. it's not a hard war but it's not an easy one either okay let's uh get a few more units in that case actually since i just said that it's not an easy war i should get at least five units more i'll eventually get up to max line force limit we can afford that not an issue right now it is pretty vital that we secure the northern bits as soon as we can since uh the poles likely will attack the hungarians when the hungarians are weak since if we go over here they do have an interest in the northern bits they want to take over and uh i'm assuming unify the western Slavs into a uh, alliance of superhuman Slavic people that squat 90% of the time and while squatting they they poop gold that's their superpower apparently that's it's just how it goes but yeah we're gonna we're gonna prevent that alliance of superheroes to happen because uh we got our own union it's called the German Union and our superpower is that we make amazing spreadsheets I mean I'm talking the best spreadsheets in the world people are paying thousands of dollars for our German spreadsheet. It's insane. It's absolutely insane what's going on here. And yes, in case you're wondering, I'm trying to drag on the war, war a little bit longer. That's why I'm letting them siege down this province here. I'm not pushing them because uh, if I do the union with them now, <laughs> look at the aggressive expansion. We got basically all of the HRE against us. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we got to wait for a few years. And if we just occupy everything and they don't have any provinces, they're going to unconditionally surrender. We don't want them to unconditionally surrender just yet. Since these guys are loyal, let's ask them to defend our provinces. Maybe they're going to do a little bit of suicidio in the uh, Hungarian armies. Let's see. Well, uh, yeah, they're going to lose that battle. At least they took out the unit from there. So they lost all the siege progress in order to uh, reinforce. I'm gonna move away from there. I don't want to get my 12,000 stack wiped by the Hungarians. No, sir, we don't. We don't want that. We really don't. Let's go. 49%. Please give me the siege. Do it now. As expected, they are pushing in here. Um, yeah, it's okay. Bohemia and their vassals losing stuff is really not big of a... It's not, it's not any of my concerns, really. <laughs> I guess the Hungarian coalition has a very important decision to make here. Are they gonna reinforce their units or are they gonna let them get stacked? and Vipanic room 
and it seems like they let them get stakumd varanagudumd. Feels bad, man. For them, feels really bad. Like this, it would be 61. It would literally be very few nations, right? Like after a couple of months passes, almost nobody. But if we do this to get the gold mine, it's significantly more. However, it's also significantly better because we're getting a gold mine. And also, they're not going to trigger against me. Even if they want to, I'm going to be too strong for them. Because look at this, boys. The Castolians want to be our bestest friends and we're going to get that alliance and royal marriage with them because I have a strong suspicion we're going to be able to sneakily put ourselves on the Castilian throne also. As consequence, we're going to be able to get a union over Castile, Aragon, Burgundy, Poland, Lithuania, Bohemia, Hungary, Milan, and Joe Mama. <laughs> No, seriously though, Joe's got enough on his plate as it is, okay? Let him, le leave Joe alone, all right? He, he needs to get some sleep, yo. Oh, Croatia, you couldn't run away in time, could you now? Ya Hungarians left ya behind, boy. There you go, bye-bye. Bye-bye, Croatia. All right, let's get this done. Um, gonna get this back from here. Actually, no, I'm gonna get it back from the Venetians. We got enough for two claims now. We can get the secondary claim on Istria. That is uh, definitely one of my uh, vital interests. And now we can use that additional diplomatus to do zisus boom shakalokos we got a good five prestige and 11 dakits and the best part is we can even push in further now so let's wipe out that army i'm not gonna wipe out the 11,000 the hungarians have still since i kind of want them to uh you know not be completely useless after i get the union against them we're gonna wait until the first of january 1449 and then we make that uh, juicy peace deal that's gonna make everybody really pissed with us <laughs> Let's also get more units because we're gonna need a lot more units to uh, keep everybody at bay essentially, right? Make sure they don't uh, rebel against their uh, beloved Hecharchi Hemperor. Because remember, coalitions are less likely to trigger or to form if you have a really strong nation or a really strong alliance set or a combination of the both. Brother, talk about bad RNG. <laughs> Look at that. The Milanese got a decent air. I'm not sure if this is gonna still get their uh, Ambrosian Republic disaster or not. I'll be honest, I don't remember if he's got the right skills for it or not but um yeah it just sucks to see that happen hey look at that boys significantly less nations in a coalition against us oh and i can do even better by giving out the um the patronage of the arts which i should have given a while back i actually forgot about it we get more prestige which means more aggressive expansion impact reduction so yeah that's good that's really gucci all right that's super manageable in my opinion let's go with the peace deal boys 140 111 we could demand other stuff but we don't need to and we got both the Croatians and the Hungarians as a union. But there's going to be an event which is going to make uh, Croatia fully a part of Hungary. Since we've gotten the union over the Hungarians. Let's also go for this mission here too. And most of these other missions here get unlocked after we integrate the, um, the Hungarians. So it's going to be a while until that happens of course. Basically what I was saying earlier with, uh, with the event. Hungary just inherited Croatia. And we can also do balance of powers now that gives us one extra diplomatic relations. Take note you want to get the. Uh, strong duchies once you have two subjects you can do it now as uh the owner of two personal unions not just it doesn't have to be only vassal so essentially it's a lot better now we have eight out of eight diplo relations we're not losing any diplo points due to diplo relations being over and yes i also got that alliance with the uh castilians to make sure that uh, there's less of a chance of a coalition forming or at least triggering even if it forms speak of the devil it it literally just started okay Okay, that's okay. That's uh, that's a big one. All right, well, that's gonna be a very big one, but it's all Gucci. I don't think it's gonna trigger. We're gonna have this war finished in no time, and then they're gonna go back to uh, being my bestest friends. I don't necessarily need to fight the Serbian army now, but I'm gonna do it just because I need the army tradition. I want to get as much as possible for the future wars against the Ottomans. They got some really strong units, and we need to counteract those units with just at least decent units, maybe. Let's say, in case you're wondering, this is what the coalition. Uh, final form is right now. All Gucci though. I'm not even worried about it. Let's uh, get ready to wipe out these uh, pretenders though because this is something I'm worried about. Pretender rebels, if they enforce on one of our junior partners, it means that that partner is going to break the personal union with us. So we don't want that to happen. Oh, look at that. Courtesy of the Poles, we have a new vassal opportunity in uh, Volochia. Since they only have two provinces left, we can feed them back the rest in our war against the Poles. Speaking 
speaking of, let's make sure we're ready for that because when the truce is over, we really want to be um, at war with them because we don't want them to join the coalition against us also. They do have the aggressive expansion, 68, so they would join against us if we let them. Uh... Come on, boys. We need to win this. Come on. For honor and freedom. Well, not really freedom since we're technically, you know, taking your freedom away by making our little schnipple door, but don't think about it too much. All right. Uh, aggressive expansion. Eh. And we get a few extra nations against us if we took all of it. So I could take these four provinces and in the next war I can finish off Serbia. The added benefit of this is that it prevents anybody else around them from actually um, taking what's left of Serbia. And most important, I get the last gold mine in my surroundings. So that means the Kosovo gold mine means I got Kosovo, I got Hunt, I've got Eger, I've got Intel. And I'm going to put every single last one of you bastards that are not subscribed to my channel to work in these mines and get me all that gold okay so if you don't want to be a, a miner you better you better subscribe to the channel sir okay just just do it oh we have 159 relacionos okay let's bring that down a little bit by uh making myself the uh the new elector <laughs> hey boy look at that you see we're voting for ourselves because we love ourselves so much what who said that that's a privilege with the other electors because apparently not everybody's voting for me anymore even my allies are not i'm guessing it has something to do with you know the fact that i got a lot of aggressive expansion but hey how else would we in just six years go from uh like 200 dev to 700 or some shit. I waited out before I uh, pieced out the Bosnians because uh, I want to see what my aggressive expansion looks like and now with uh, whatchamacallit uh, with uh, the Valachians as my brand new Vassalis. So that's one out of the way and I've also made them Catholic so that's two out of the way but now yeah, we might not have enough uh, aggressive expansion for this do we? Full annexation would mean actually that's not too bad. That's legit not too bad at all. Who would we be worried about in that situation? We would get only five new nations in a coalition against us. And they're all in the HRE, so it's not a big deal. Okay, that's good. All right, there you go, boys. There you go. So that means just the what's left of the southern bits would join. The northern boys don't care as much. Only 47, aggressive expansion 34, and so on. And we're getting ready, of course, for the war with the Poles. We're going to take back our Valachian boys' lands. And it seems like Brandenburg is going to join them. Oh, that sucks. That actually sucks. Let's make sure we make uh, Poland our third new rival in in that case and let's do this so we don't waste too many of those troops to attrition there oh my dude we can get muscovy as a freaking ally oh wow that is just next level a dumb big boy massive brain we're getting that we're getting that because the muscovites are going to act as a good buffer to the northern bits so eventually after we get the union with the poles we're going to of course wipe out the muscovites but until that point it's good to just get less aggressive expansion with them for that matter i might get a temporary alliance with the british too so that i can use them in my future wars against the uh, the french wait who are they at war with oh my god burgundy's at war with provence holy schnapps Seems like my future PU is going to get me uh, a lot of extra lands over here. Also going to be lowering the autonomy since I've uh, had a little bit of autonomy build up in the past few years. Can also seize another 5% crown lands and we went up to 16% in just the first 7 years. Absolutely brilliant alongside that extra expansion that we've had, isn't it? Okie dokes, avec la truce is over. Let's set up uh, Giorgio as the war target, I guess. Colin mines, Palatinat. Where would we be without mines in Palatinat? <laughs> We, we, it, would, it wouldn't make any difference really. Okay, let's push in. Push, 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 push. As they say, rush B, rush B. That's what they used to say historically, guys. That's uh, a historical term. It's totally not made up by uh, Counter-Strike. Seems like uh, Burgundy finished their war with the Provencians since uh, they're joining in our war. And holy mother, they got this stuff? This is 1715 development, man. Lorraine is a uh, Big boy bucks right there. Glad they actually went for Lorraine and not uh, just Barra and Verdun. That's way more worth it in my opinion. Now that being said, the world is on fire guys. Because the Ottomans are at war with the Venetians and the uh, Albanians. And everybody else is at war with everybody. And whilst we're sieging down Poland, Poland is sieging down Hungary. Causing immense damage to my country of course. Because uh, I care the most about my PU lands uh, obviously. <laughs> 
Sorry, sorry. I'll stop now. Also pretty funny how uh, RNG works. It took me 412 days to take Krakow. It was stuck in 42% like six times the same schnapps. Meanwhile, the forts in Poznan and the forts in Giurgiu fell ridiculously fast by comparison. One of them at 21% and the other one at 7 So yeah, RNG be like that sometime, boys. I actually can take everything I want from the poles now. So I'm gonna go for max money. I'm gonna take the province of Perzemisol so I can release from this uh, Galicia Volhynia and then I can feed them back all of the cores that are highlighted right now. That's like what? Eight cores or something? Seven cores or something? Actually, it's eight, right? I can count. I, I promise I can count. <laughs> And um, aside from that, we just need a few more provinces here, which we can take in the next war. Actually, maybe I should take Novi Sox since this is a Highlands and I can replace this fort in uh, Trenchin with the one in Novi Sox. Or maybe just keep the one in Trenchin since this is a mountain fort. 506 ducats. We give back all of our provinces to Valachia and we take Prezemiso so we can release Galicia Falkinia. So I would actually say it's not so bad of a deal. Let's Gucci Smaducci. We got how much of that? Like 400 ducats or something? We can pay off the... 4% loans, which is one of the loans apparently. And let's bring our boyos back because we managed to get Poland a truce with the Poles, meaning they're not going to join a coalition against us, and meaning we bought some more time as consequence. Likely, what's left in the coalition is also going to dissipate sooner or later. I'm going to test this out actually. Let's uh, restart the game. Sometimes, if you restart the game and the coalition is weak enough, the AI chooses to dissipate the coalition, basically, to leave the coalition. Come on, Carlito, you need to die so we trigger the uh, the Burgundian inheritance, brother. And yes, um, I restarted the game, and instead of nations leaving, we got Memmingen joining the coalition. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess the game's trying to tell me I need to build more units, boys. That's what the game's trying to tell me here. Or at least make sure these units are reinforced enough. Holy mother. Oh, this Milanese Sussation. Oui, oui. <laughs> yeah, boy. Like I said before, it's time to make uh, Australia great again. What? All right, let's go with this. I was ab I was literally about to declare my war in the Ottomans. <laughs> my troops were in position here, but uh, obviously a PU with uh, Milan is a big freaking deal. So let's a glue. Let's a glue, 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 glue. I'm actually gonna let my um, my allies do the work. Maybe I don't even wait. What? <gasps> no, they're allied to Trent. I should have paid attention. I was literally getting relations to um, Diplo Vassalize Trent. Ugh, I need to get Trent and uh, Brem Brem Brigands as Diplo Vassals so I can uh, do one of my missions. But yeah, um, yeah, let's send one of our armies to help out, I guess, against the uh, vile Milanese that have uh, the goals to just uh, try and be independent. How dare you? You know, I really feel like uh, my presence was not needed at all over here. Look at the amount of armies just rushing them. Let's go back. I'm gonna be uh, just focusing on the Ottomans, I guess, since we want to take out the, the scourge of the modern world. Well, modern, at least according to the 15th century, really. Looks like uh, so long for Trent and Brigantes. I'm gonna be nice to you guys, though. I actually want to be nice so I can diplovasalize you. So let's cancel some of your rivals, I guess. How much prestige did I get? 2.4. Perfect. I went up to 100 prestige as consequence now. And uh, yeah, boys, don't... I don't I don't need nothing from you. Just that. That's that's the only thing I want. There you go. You got off easily, Bragantz, because I'm a nice... I'm such a nice guy in this game. I swear. All the in-game nations love me, guys. Just, just don't look at this coalition map. <laughs> You know, I just realized I've never done the achievement for Austria AEIOU. Basically, it requires that you um, fulfill the whole Austrian mission tree. I haven't done it because, let's just face it, it's a really long one. It basically requires that you play pretty much till the end of the game. But if you guys want me to turn this into a little bit of a longer run where we essentially go through 1400 to 1700s as the Austrians, that would have to be like four or five separate parts. If we get 8,000 likes on this first part, and you guys let me know in the comment section that you want to see that. Then I can do it. And I'll try to make it a little bit longer as well. So that um explain a little bit more in detail what exactly I'm doing. Alright. Our boys here have CGS Maximus. And let's get the money is. <sighs> I don't even want to think about the amount of nations in this coalitionus. But it's fine. Union Witten Milanenstein. Yeah, yeah. The Gutenstein. And of course, the coalition is growing. It's basically most of Italy at this point. Since we've added Milan to our little 
Pokemon Ball collection. Let's just uh, forget about all that though and let's go to speed 3 because I want to be attacking the Ottomans. And I just realized I forgot to get my claims in the Ottoman land. <laughs> oh well, it's uh, it's okay. It's, it's fine. I planned this. I planned this, guys. Uh, totally wasn't a mistake. That being said though, most of their army is uh, attacking the Venetians. And they're probably going to get their asses handed to them if I join up with Venice. Wait, Venice only has 22 ships? <gasps> Did Venice lose the naval fights against? them bro what wow okay that's gonna make it tough but i should get enough words from the balkan provinces to uh enforce my peace deal the brave ottoman defender is trying to defend not let that happen boys uh okay boys looks like we have please tell me it's me please tell me it's me and the winner is austria <laughs> Freak yeah, boys. Freak yeah. That's right. The chances of us getting uh, Burgundy are like super high and we got it. There you go. We pretty much have half of Europe as it is since Burgundy is a freaking Masi- Wait, why do they not have Brabant? Oh my god. Are you kidding me, brother? When the hell did they lose Brabant, bro? How? When? Explain this to me. Well, that's unfortunate. Brabant's like pretty good land here in, uh, in the English Channel node, which is going to be my main trade node even eventually after I integrate the Burgundians. And of course, the Ottomans pieced out the Venetians and now they're basically just sieging my extremely well-defended fortification in Eshtal. You know what? It wouldn't be such a bad idea for me to attack them here, but my army is significantly further away from there than it should be. Maybe my vassals, I'll just put them over to uh, aggressive. Maybe my vassals are gonna suicide bomb their, um, their troops into the uh, Ottoman troops. Did I just freaking say suicide bomb? Holy shit, what's wrong with me? Yeah, uh, that's not really good. That's that's really not good. They just took uh, Echtal, so uh, fingers crossed this falls at 14%. It didn't fall at 14, but it did fall at 21%, boys, in true streamer luck fashion, obviously. Totally denied it for like five times for that to fall so I can do my peace deal. I didn't do that totally. Let's see what kind of peace deal they would agree to. I would love to take all of Albania. Is that in the... Can I Can I do that? Maybe if I take a little bit less money, how would that look like? Oh, that would be a lot less money. 700 ducats only? No, no. As you can see by the fact that I got minus 50 due to, you know, event. Um, I need money. I need money to pay off my loans and to get back on my feet. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take Gumulcine Kostendil. Gallipoli because I'm going to release Bulgaria and Byzantium from these areas. I'm going to take full money and maybe war reps if I can. Can I take war reps? I could actually. And then only 1,000 ducats is A-OK -okay in my book. And I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, you're piecing out too fast. You could take more lands, not just the Balkans. That's true. But they still have a pretty strong army. They got 35,000 units. And I've avoided engagement so far because I was relying on them basically being in the Venetian lands and them sieging down my really amazing mountain forts and so on. So I was avoiding combat as much as I could so I can have an easy war. Because the big war is going to be the next one. I want to get 100% in that one so I can feed back my Byzantine and my Bulgarian vassals the cores that they have so byzantium's gonna get all of the greek parts and uh, bulgaria is obviously gonna get the bulgarian and the macedonian parts essentially getting all of the balkans within our control and stomping out the ottoman influence in this area i'm sorry what a noble from the von habsburg family is gonna succeed to the throne when enrique is gonna pass away uh okay okay i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that because if we get a habsburg on the spanish throne chances or we're gonna be able to get a union with the Castilians too and that would just actually be half of freaking Europe if not more than that right now as you guys know I'm trying my best to mix in both vital information as well as have a lot of fun whilst I'm doing it so if you enjoyed this run you know what you need to do to see the next bit of this and to see that amazing burgundy run and until the next time check out this France domination video and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support 